started. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, it's a real honor and a privilege to be here in front of all of you. Um, uh, and yeah, I'm so excited to, to speak to you about this. So just really quickly, I guess everyone has been brought here by the promise of faster DSP code and making things go faster and make your code run better. I mean, uh, has anyone ever heard of what um, intrinsic functions are before? Uh, just raise your hands. Who knows what I'm talking about? Anyone got no idea what I'm talking about? Yes, that's what I'd like to hear. So that's kind of, you guys have kind of hooped my target audience. And for everyone else who's kind of heard of them or maybe wants to learn more, then um, yeah, this is for you. So I mean, we had a quick introduction just then. Um, so I'll skip over that, but um, Jamie. Um, so why do we care about intrinsics? Why do we care about code optimization? Um, and why should we bother doing it by hand? So I've got a quick demo, hopefully, that is going to show us what we're talking about. So I've programmed this little, little app here. And what this app is going to do, uh, I've, what we'll come on to later, is it's a fun I've got a function that I've optimized and a function that I've just left kind of as it is. So this is going to like spin up a thread, and it's going to run this function. I'm going to set it to run 5 million times. And this is like a, a buffer size, but that doesn't seem to make a difference. Um, so we're going to run it with no optimization, and we're we'll going to see how long it takes to do 5 million uh, passes. And we're going to let it run, and we're going to see how long that takes. And that's not going to take too long, hopefully. Hopefully. OK, about 7.3 seconds. OK, pretty good. So if we now hand optimize this with what we're going to learn today, how long is that going to take? Ooh, the tension is rising. How long is it going to take? OK, about half the time. I mean. Is that worth it? If you're going to run something a lot of times, like we're going to do, like with this, we're going to learn about uh, how to optimize the complex multiplication for a convolu for convolution. You're going to want to optimize that. That needs to run fast. You're going to run, you know, if you're going to limit your users like by fifth, you know, by half. Uh, if you don't, you know, make code that runs runs well and runs efficiently, um, you know, you want to let your users, uh, you know, use as many plugins as they want or as they physically can. So, <laughs> um, so without further ado, we're going to move on. And if anyone here is coding, oh, I can't see there's many laptops out, but if you do want to code along, or for the guys at home, uh, there's a GitHub repository. You can go and clone that now if you want to note that down. If you just go to my uh, GitHub, you, you should be able to find that. And you can code along, and, or maybe you want to catch up or go back later. You can, uh, you can do that later. Um, OK, so my objective for today, um, I mean, I'm still you know, still learning about all this sort of stuff and, um, you know, still, you know, learning more and more every day. So my objective here today is just for you to go away being able to, be feeling empowered that you can start um, feeling confident with writing some optimized code with intrinsics. Um, I mean, you can get into, it's a very deep subject when you're talking about code optimization. So um, my objective is that you can, you know, go away and feel confident and get started optimizing your code. Um, OK, so I'll tell a brief story about how I got interested in intrinsics and uh, what is SIMD and what are all these functions, and we'll get started. So basically, I won't talk you through everything, but basically, I was, I'm writing a, a convolution algorithm for a plugin with uh, my friends at Present Day Production. And I kind of, as a challenge to myself, wanted to write uh, the convolution algorithm from scratch, because that would know, be a fun thing to do. We all like to learn, uh, find out new things. Um, so obviously, the juice convolution algorithm is a great thing, but um, you know, doing it from scratch would be fun. So, um, but you know, I was finding that you know I wasn't really getting the performance that I was hoping for. So I was exploring different options, and this is where intrinsics kind of sprung into my life. And uh, yeah, eventually um, started to find some great tutorials. And if you want any more uh, supplementary material to this talk afterwards, uh, I highly recommend um, on YouTube One Lone Coder. He has a great uh, YouTube video that talks about um, is another great introduction to intrinsics, but also talks about um, what we're not going to talk about as much today uh, about branching and conditional statements using intrinsics. Um, so if you want to learn more about that side of it, uh, that video is I would highly recommend. Um, so I'm going to, you know, briefly talk about like you know what is code optimization. We've kind of got you know we've got two options really here, or or combinations of the two options. We've got, we can manually code. Optimizations using, you know, historically that's been, been done with assembly. And, you know, not everyone wants to program assembly. Um, but we've also got our compiler, you know, we run in release mode and it, you know, it doesn't, you know, these days, you know, everyone says, you know, the compilers are pretty smart. Don't, it, it, the 
the compiler is smarter than you, just let the compiler do its thing. And what we have with intrinsics is like this kind of nice halfway house between being able to uh, kind of hand optimize code, but also keep it, you know, keep it in C++ and keep it, you know, reasonably portable. Um, so as I say, doesn't the compiler do this for us? Well, as you saw earlier, partly, yes, but there's still um, some CPU cycles up for grabs if we're willing to put in the effort. Um, and as well, I hope to convince you of, it's it's not as hard as you know it initially might think it it, be, it is. Um, so yes, so we'll briefly talk about what is SIMD. If any of you guys heard of what uh, heard of SIMD? You've heard that phrase before. Hands up, you've, you've heard of it. Okay, great. And hands hands up here. You've never heard of SIMD? Okay, great. So we're preaching to the choir. So that's great. Um, so uh, yes, we want to do multiple operations uh, simultaneously on on the data. So that's great. We all know what that is. So we're going to talk. You know, get kind of dive into the integrity detail now. So, um, so what are intrinsic functions? And these are just basically functions, uh, extensions to uh, your, you know, uh, they are functions that your processor has that um, lets you, you know, perform on multiple uh, floating point numbers at once. So traditionally, you'd have, you know, an assembly instruction that says, um, multiply one float by another single float. Um, but we can use this, you know, this data type called, uh, and very catchily called, an M two five six to um, to perform on eight floating point value, values simultaneously. Is have you guys heard of uh, this data type before? Hands up if you've heard of it before. Okay, great. And it, hands up if you've never heard of that before. That's completely new to you. Okay, great. So basically, M two five six means eight, just eight floats. They're just going round together. Right, and they we have a, you know, special registers in your CPU that uh, that take the M two five six. So when you look at you, know, you see your registers in your CPU, you've got your EAX or RAX or whatever, and that's you know uh, like sixty four bit I think normally in sixty four bit systems. But these M two five sixes they get loaded into special uh, no no post for guessing uh, two hundred fifty six bit width registers. Um, so we can operate on all these simultaneously. Um, so we'll just dive into the intrinsic straight away, and um, so we can see, you know, what's going on here. So, so we'll declare, you know, three M two five sixes, and what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to set one of them to contain one to eight, right? So, when we come along here, we'll see left. Okay, that makes sense. Left and right, and then if we look at that last line, what's going to happen uh, at out? Any anyone want to guess what's going to happen there? Right, is going to add them together, and we could, you know, and that's it. That's as complicated as it gets. As, oh, that's as complicated as, as you know, we're going to make it today, really. Um, so hopefully, you know, that kind of little introduction just kind of says, oh, okay, once we've loaded the values into these, it's actually not too hard to, you know, start manipulating them and start doing stuff that's that's SIMD, right? You feeling feeling confident about using using those? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and just so quickly, we'll touch on like what the different um, we talk about all the different instruction sets, and different processes will have different uh, specific implementations of SIMD. So most of your Intel in processes, they'll have either SSE, AVX, AVX2, or AVX512. And they're basically just specific implementations of um, these SIMD instructions. So SSE was like a, an older technology that was like 1999, um, and they had sh smaller registers. AVX came out in 2009, I think, and then AVX2, very similar, um, but offering a few more features like the fuse multiply accumulate, which is what we're going to be using today. So if you guys are following along today, um, we're going to be using AVX2 specific stuff, but it's also possible to um, to write something similar with uh, just normal AVX. But uh, so if you're following on with an M1, uh, we'll, we'll come on to that later. Um, but this is going to be specific to uh, Intel processors with uh, AVX2 uh, today. Um, so as I say, is this cross-platform? Um, kind of, not really. So as I say, you've got to write this code specifically for different processes. Um, so by choosing to use these tool sets, um, you're, set, you, you, you're specifically targeting certain users. And I think uh, the guys at Native Instruments with their massive X, they say, you know, look, we need to use AVX uh, intrinsics in order to make our our product run effectively. So I think it just, to me, highlights that you know, 
if you know the giants of, and, the, and the wise people at uh, Native Instruments say, you know, look, we need these to make our product run, and you know that kind of implies, you know, maybe we're going to have less users, but the users that do have it, they're going to get a great experience. So I think we shouldn't necessarily shy away from these because you know we're going to cut out certain users by using these in products that need them. We're able to create better products and ones that work better and more effectively. Um, but yes, as I say about M1, there are some great uh, conversion libraries to convert your uh, SSC uh, Intel intrinsics to um, ARM Neon-based intrinsics. So that's something to bear in mind, is that you, hopefully uh, you should be only need to write this stuff once, and you should be good to go. So right, we're going to crack on with the meter stuff, and we're going to write some code. Who's excited to write some code? Yeah, we're excited to write some code. OK, uh, for the, you guys following along at home, or um, you know, later in the future watching this on YouTube or whatever, uh, from that repo, we're going to download the uh, Hello World SIMD. Uh, we're going to open this, this pro product up, and that's in the, the GitHub. So we're going to do basically what that, what that, um, uh, pr that example was earlier. So we're going to say, OK, come along to main.cpp. So, OK, we're going to start with this. We're going to do exa basically th exactly that. So we'll start with this function, add vectors. And we're going to say, OK, um, add vectors. So we want, we want to do effectively this, but you know, simplest possible use case. We're going to you know, optimize this. Obviously, I don't think you would necessarily want to do that. But I think just for us to learn about you know, the sort of patterns we need to use um, to do this effectively, uh, I think this is a good starting point. So we'll run add vectors, and we'll see what we've got. So we're going to add two vectors of 1 to 16, and then we're going to add them together. So we'll run that and see what we get. The power of live demos. Have we got it? Yes, we're away. So that looks about right. So we had 1 to 16 on both sides. Add them together. We get the even numbers. Great. So then let's jump into this function, add vectors sim d. Uh, and I'm just going to delete everything in there. Don't look. I should have deleted this earlier. <laughs> um, OK, great. So, so we need to declare some registers. OK. So we're going to go, uh, we want to have an output, input, and a left and a right. Fair enough. Makes sense. This is what we're handed. We're handed uh, float pointers, because I think we're able to get a bit more performance uh, just handing the pointers like that. Um, OK, so we know that we need to do we're going to use eight floating pack. We're going to do eight at a time. So that means we only need to, as opposed to going over each element, we can go over you know, an eighth as many times. So let's say, we're going to say num simd is as many times as we're going to do the loop. We're going to say num elements over eight. Makes sense. So let's make a for loop. Typing, here we go. Int i equals zero. Num sim d, i plus plus. Great, clear enough so far. Um, so then, um, because it's kind of a bit more lower level, we need to think about um, we need to kind of get into a mindset of thinking about how we might write in assembly. So we need to use this paradigm of kind of uh, load process store. So we're going to load values into these uh, into our registers, um, into these variables, and then process them, and then put them back out in our um, uh, back in our data, so we're, and you'll have to uh, you'll kind of get used to you seeing the functions and kind of just like filtering the right information. So let's load information into left, and I'm using these underscores just to let us know that these are not normal. That these are our M two five sixes. So we're going to say load ps. Okay, great, and we'll load in from left. Okay, so far so good, and we'll do the same for right. into right. Yep, can type, that's good. Um, and then we want to add these together. So we'll say add underscore ps. And so and we want to sign that to out. OK. And we're going to add left to right. OK. So, how many did we just sign? 
Okay, I think that makes sense. Uh, we all with that? I mean, these function names do look a bit um, confusing, and uh, but they, they kind of have to be because they're, they're they're so specific to what they are. And you could you could go along and you could write um, like wrapper functions for these to kind of make these clearer for yourself. Um, you know, that's one option to kind of keep it keep it neat, and that also maybe makes it scalable uh, or makes it gives you the option to write uh, different. Um, so you could write you know function let's say. Uh, Vector add, you could say, and then you could have uh, if uh, arm, they do this function, and if you know Intel, do that function. You could do that in there if you wanted, um, but as we'll see, there's a another library you can use to to do that. Um, and the the PS it means in parallel single point precision. So if we're going to do PD, that would mean we're doing we're using doubles, and we would have four per register, uh, four floating point values per register. Okay. Uh, and then we need to store this back out to memory. So we'll say store PS. Uh, we didn't come on, also complete. Okay, great. And then we just need to store. And then we we'll take it takes a uh, pointer to the data we want to put back into. So we'll go point it back into output, and we want to in output put back in that M two five six that we've just got just calculated with the line above. So, and then out. Okay, great. Cool. And then because we're using pointers, I mean, you've kind of got options for how you want to do this. Um, I found that um, I need to do, I kind of need to do a bit more testing with this, and maybe it's just a style thing, but I found that I found it to be more uh, intuitive to increment the pointers that we've got here, um, like this. So we need to skip over, you know, the next eight values of left because, we're, you know, we need to get the next lot of uh, the next M two five six will start eight floats down the line, and we need to do the same for all of those. And there we go. Plus equals eight. Great. Okay, so I think that's basically it. So we should be able to run that and get the same result. Hey! Oh wait, yeah, that is right. Uh, we uh, we changed it as well. Okay, great. So. We did, we've just done some SIMD, and yeah, we've written our first uh, instructions. And you know, I don't know if you necessarily want to do this. I'd imagine you know, a compiler might be able to kind of see what's going on here, and you just let it do that. But when we get into more complicated stuff, as we'll get onto with the complex multiplication, we can see that there's, there's room to, for us to you know, improve. Um, and really quickly, uh, can anyone think of a reason why there may be some edge cases that don't work here. Just hands up really quickly, yeah? Yes, if we have, you know, what happens if we have seven? Right. So, and that's for you to kind of decide what assumptions you're going to make about your input. So if you know that you're only going to have powers of two coming in, fine, this will work great. But if you want to, you know, have this scalable, you need to say, you know, look, if the input isn't divisible by eight, by eight do this first lot um, by the normal means, and then do the rest of it um, with our nice optimized SIMD. So, but that's for you to decide about um, what you're going to do with your input. Like, what assumptions are you going to allow yourself to make? Um, great. So we'll move back over to the slides. Um, but yeah, so I, I ho hope to think that like you guys are like, okay, that wasn't too bad, and like hopefully now you can feel that you can take some of these concepts away and implement in the, in your own code. Um, I guess we can touch on now like why. You might not want to use intrinsics um, before we crack on with um, getting into the meat and potatoes of optimizing some convolution. Um, so obviously, it takes a bit more time and effort to write uh, optimized code like this. And for you know an addition function like that, um, you know as I say, you'd expect the compiler to probably get that right. I mean, you might not. It's probably going to do something smarter than. You know, our, our uh, puny humans can do um, for that sort of thing because it can you can see what's going on. It's done that you know millions of times before. Um, so as I say, as developers, your time is, is is really valuable. And you need to say, is this time spent optimizing really going to impact end users that much? Like, could I you know spend time you know either optimizing something else or just rethinking about the algorithm? Is your algorithm in the structure of your algorithm? Optimal. Do you need to think about doing that first? Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. Like, you know, is intrinsics the right tool for the, you know, for the job at hand? Um, 
OK, so let's, let's, let's crack on the meat and potatoes. Let's optimize some convolution. This is something a, bit more, a bit, little bit more complicated, but it uses all the same principles that we have been using today. So if you're following along, you can open up the SIMD pond convolution. And this is going to be an audio plugin. It's already got an impulse response and everything loaded up. So all we're going to need to do is going to replace the um, unoptimized code with the optimized code. And then you can open it up in whatever D DAW you want, and it should run. Um, great. So I'm just going to delete this code here so we can get that sorted ourselves. So great. So um, just quickly about complex multiplication, if anyone's not familiar with it. Um, it basically means, um, uh, just so yeah, I'll ask you guys, actually. Uh, you guys familiar with complex numbers? Hands up if you're familiar with complex numbers. Uh, OK, right. And hands up if you're not. OK, so basically, they're just, uh, you can think about them just like coordinates. There's pairs of numbers going around together, and we just need to process them in a, in a, in a particular way. Um, so basically, all we need to do is, this is what we need to do in, in, our, in our function. So, um, so we've got the, the interleaved data. Um, so sorry, I've got non-interleaved uh, complex numbers coming in. So we've got all of left's real parts and all of left's right parts, kind of one after another. Um, so as you can see here, that's the unoptimized version. And here we've got our, right, so this is what the code we're going to write. And uh, we've got those, uh, like kind of the Nyquist stuff. But we're not going to touch on that because that's more about the specifics of convolution. And we're going to want to talk about our, um, uh, the actual kind of SIMD stuff. So we're going to follow the pattern of um, uh, store, process, and load. Process and store back. OK, great. So there's quite a few, uh, a few things to deal with here, because we've got um, effectively eight different numbers to be, to be working with. So we need to think about getting uh, out real. We need to say uh, load PS. We need to get that actually right. And if you've noticed me making a mistake, then please just shout out, because I'm sure there'll be one or two of those. And we can just pass that uh, output. Oh, we have lost the screen. I don't know why we've lost the screen. Have we got any? Uh... I don't think anything's changed this side, but I don't know. Very tense. Oh, we got that side. OK, we're back. That's great. Um, so we've got the output real, so we'll need that because we're doing um, a multiply accumulate. So we need to accumulate from that back into that. And we'll get output imaginary. And we'll do, uh, so. sorry? We will store to the output, but, we'll, but because we need to um, accumulate uh, with that, we need to say that times that plus this. We need to know what this is before we uh, store into it as well, because it'll be part of the, uh, the operation. Um, as we'll see. So, and because it's uh, deinterleaved, so we can just say plus. I've got this variable half size, so that's you know half the size of the buffer. And we're going to assume for this, uh, we've got you know uh, some power of two or at least multiple of eight uh, elements coming in. So, and that's the pattern we can use to get the rest of the things out. So we'll say write real equals. This is all a bit copy pasty, maybe. Um, but yeah, so. What is your guys' impression so far about um, feeling confident about implementing some of this? Do you feel like it's a, uh, am I kind of convincing you that um, it's it's accessible? How, how are you guys feeling about it at the moment? Right? It's not, 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 I don't think it's the hardest thing ever. I mean, I was starting to learn about this uh, just early th this year, really. And I was kind of um, impressed with how quickly I was able to, to pick it up, I think. Um, I start getting some results, uh, which I was really, really pleased with, and that's kind of why I was so keen to come and come and share this with you. Um, and so left, real, and then left, left imaginary, left. Okay, that looks good to me. Um, so we've got all of those. So now we can start doing some some maths, and we said that. 
uh, AVX2 has the uh, multiply accumulate functions, and that's what we're going to use. That's that's obviously really important uh, for DSP. And there's, uh, if we get time at the end, I'll go over the normal AVX uh, option for this. Uh, but fortunately, this computer's got AVX2, so we can use that. Um, so great, we're going to say we're going to do output real equals, and then you know this is where documentation is going to be your friend with these functions, the names of functions like this. You're going to have to uh, do a bit of documentation digging. So we want a fused multiply addition. Parallel sync, yes, that's the function that we want. Kind of unintuitive names, but you kind of get used to reading them. Um, and then we'll say uh, left real times uh, right real. And then we need to add in out real. And that's, as you raise your point there, that's why we need to load in out, uh, out real, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, can you repeat the question, please? Sorry. Oh, I mean, uh, could, we, could you read the question for me first as well, please? Yes, yeah, so you'll have to, the decisions you have to make. Sorry, the question is, sorry, um, uh, do we need to kind of make a decision about these um, at compile time, uh, which ones we're going to use? Um, effectively, the answer is yes. Um, so as we'll, as we'll might touch on later, um, with the this function, this is not available in any processor that uh, has got, uh, hasn't got AVX2. So if you, you know, wanted to support you know, just simple AVX, you, you couldn't use this function. And uh, as I found out, you can compile this on a non-AVX2 machine. It'll compile it. As soon as you go to go to run it, you'll get an error and your compute and the program will just crash. Because like, you know, it's you know it's running along and there's some assembly fu function that your computer goes, you know, it, although it's just compiled it, it'll see this bit of assembly and it'll go, I've never seen that function before in my life, and it'll just crash the program. So um, yeah, you need to be aware of uh, what functions you're using. Um, and because you know, you might <laughs> be able to compile it, but uh, it might not run. Do we have another question over there, sorry? Yes, so um, we're using, uh, sorry, the SIMD, in, the question was, are there SIMD instruction sets for ARM? Absolutely, yes, there is. Uh, that's called NEON. This is uh, AVX, and NEON is just the, the ARM equivalent. Um, and there, as I think we'll hopefully get time to touch on later, there's like kind of a conversion library wrapper called uh, SSE to NEON. And although it's called SSE, it does all the uh, AVX stuff as well. Um, so you, hopefully you should be able to write everything in uh, the Intel style and it should be able to convert over with the equivalent functions. Um, okay, great. So we've got one multiply accumulate. Um, we need another multiply accumulate, but this is something to be very aware of. This is something I, get, I got wrong a few times um, when pra <laughs> rehearsing this. Um, we wanna for this one, we need to see we've got a, a fused multiply subtraction. and Again, you need to check the documentation because they're very subtly different. And we, you might be tempted to think, oh, we want fuse multiply subtraction. And that compiles, and that's a perfectly reasonable instruction. But that isn't the one we want because what that's going to do is multiply left and right, and then from that, subtract out. But we want to multiply left and right and then subtract, subtract that product from out, um, or the third operand even. So what we actually want is a fused negative multiply addition. So just to make it confusing, I, I, I'm sure you know there's some really creative dudes, and these guys are great what they're doing, um, who are writing these functions. But naming conventions, I don't think, is their strong point. So maybe writing wrappers for these, um, maybe what you're learning, is, is, it would be a helpful thing. Um, so yes, that's something to be very aware of. Is, and you know, documentation is the friend. And thankfully, all of these Intel, intrinsic, Intel intrinsics are fantastically documented on their website. So there's, you know, it's it's really great. So then we want to do the output stuff, and we want a. Let's just copy that. So these are all just addition, fuse multiply additions. Now um, we'll go left. Time. Okay, great. Um, left. It's real times right imaginary, and we add back in output imaginary. 
Great. And we've got right real and right slash imaginary. Yeah, great. Okay, and then now all we need to do is uh, write it right. So right, so we've got we've done our operations now. We just need to write this back into uh, our output, uh, the actual. Sorry. The third line from the bottom. This one. This one. It should be. What's wrong with this one? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Great spot. So yes, this should be. They should both be imaginary. That's quite right. Great spot. And uh, yeah, you can definitely hear what goes wrong when uh, you compile this. Uh, so yeah, we'll try not to uh, blow up the speaker. So thank you very much for that great spot. So uh, let me just check that against the slide. So real, real, imaginary, imaginary. Yeah, double real, double imaginary, double real. I think that looks right. So now we just need to store this back to uh, a memory. So we'll say store ps, and it is great, that one. And we put in our pointer. Uh, yes, output. And that's the real part. Got another thing. Great. And then output imaginary. And we can do. Uh, plus half size to get to the other side there. And then we can just increment all the pointers. And that should be everything we need. Left plus equals eight. Because we need to skip over every eight value. Plus equals eight. Okay, it'd be great if we could spell. OK, and I think that's that's pretty much it. That is all of this. I mean, you know, and you, maybe you want to comment it. We'll comment it, you know, maybe uh, load. I mean, you want, probably want to make sure you've got something helpful with these comments. I mean, because we're doing such low-level stuff, and it looks so horrific like that. I mean, I'm, you know, I really like to write nice, clean, readable code and that sort of thing. But, you know, you're kind of, your hands are tied here. So you need to, you need to use comments. Um, they will say, you know, minimize your comments. But when you're doing stuff like this, comments are your friend. When you come back and read this in in a year, two years, you'll thank yourself or kick yourself for the lack or presence of comments. Uh, trust me. <laughs> uh, so we'll say, and then that's the process. And you know, in uh, you'll see on the GitHub, I've commented this a bit, a bit nicer than here. Um, oh, that's not process. That's still load. Oh, my goodness, what we like. Um, OK, great. Well, I won't bore you with the comments, but there we go. You definitely need to write some comments. So we're getting to the point now where we should be able to compile this and run this. And you can see the CPU savings that we'll get in Ableton, in a door, in the real world. Great. Um, so once you've seen that and you've heard that, and uh, we'll, I guess we'll move on to questions. Um, but um, yes, yeah, so this is a pretty horrific sounding plugin. Uh, so what I've got here is 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 a big 10 second long impulse response, uh, and I've made the the buffer size inside the DAW very small, so we can you know really see some CPU meters moving, um, and so you're going to hear some horrifically long, <laughs> messy uh, reverb, but hopefully it's uh, going to show you roughly what kind of savings we're going to get. Oh, there were build errors. That was that. That's fine. We've already had it open. Okay. Great, so we've already had it open, but we'll make sure we're using that that we compiled. OK. No one, no one spotted any problems yet. We might hear some horrific noises if we haven't done this correctly. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's right. So let's load this up. So what we're going to hear first is the non-optimized function. And hopefully, so this is what we're, this is the non-optimized function. That's definitely working. And as I click on this button here, we're going to switch over to the optimized version. And hopefully, we're going to hear the right sounds. And we're going to see the CPU meter go down. Yes, we heard the right sounds. And you can see right there, CPU meter dipping by you know, substantial-ish margin. So like 40, 50% down to 25, 30. I mean, it's a bit jumpy, but 
Um, yeah, it's a bit jumpy right now. But yes, you know, you can see that the CPU savings we've got are fairly substantial, and that's in release mode. And in debug mode, obviously, you get some, you know, it's, the difference is just, just en uh, enormous. Um, but yes, so hopefully, uh, you know, and you know, you can go and optimize even more of this plugin, like, like the, the copying from memory or whatever you want to do, you can optimize even more. Um, but yes, um, I mean, that's the bulk of it, to be honest. Um, if you've got any questions now, uh, I'd be happy to take those. Yeah, let me, um, let me uh, we have a lot of questions. Let's see how many we have. Question over here, question over here. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of questions. We also have an online question. So, oh, great, amazing. So let me, let me do the online one first. Yeah, because great. Because that one's been in the queue for a little bit, and then we'll see if we can quickly move to the other thing. Okay, so let's see. He doesn't say where he's from. I thought that would have been exciting to know where they're from. Bashkar K says, any potential worries about loss of precision or rounding errors with SM, with SIMD, everything goes through the pipelines in a packed format, so you don't get the double promotion? Yes, so that's a great question. Uh, and the, that is documented in uh, on the line stuff, but far as I've, uh, I can tell and, uh, and I've read is that um, when it's doing the operations, it's um, it's, I don't know, understand the under the hood stuff as much as I could do for there. But what far as I've seen is that when it's doing the operations, it's in, it's kind of got infinite, it's infinite precision or whatever it's doing there, and then it gets rounded um, right at the very end when it gets uh, stored back out to the value. So the precision is, you know, basically the same as you would do uh, any any other way. Cool. Thank you. That was from Redmond, Washington. Great. Right, look at that across the, <laughs> across the globe. Wow. All right. Amazing. So. Uh, Let's go here. You had a question. Yes. Uh, yes. Was, can you repeat it? When they said the question, can you repeat it? Yes, can absolutely. So uh, we've, we've had the question that most uh, um, FFTs don't give you the results uh, D interleaved. They most say, say, say most say uh, give you uh, interleaved, right? Uh, yes, that's completely correct. Uh, what I've done, also done is I've written a, um, a D interleaver and an interleaver um, to get them in and out of this format. Um, with ABX2 now, there is actually a, um, they've got these really posh intrinsics that um, they can do alternating add and subtracts. So for when you, exactly you want to, you know, you, you process complex numbers, it can do alternating stuff for the interleave stuff. So that's really the, one of the, my next steps is to, See if we can get rid of those interleave and de interleave steps. Um, far as I could tell from my testing, the, the interleaving and de interleaving wasn't having a massive effect on the CPU. Um, but absolutely, yeah, that, you know, minimize complexity, and we should. Uh, uh, that's one of the next things I'll do. And uh, when I've done that, uh, if anyone's interested, I'll add that to the GitHub, and everyone can have access to that as well. Let's go. With and if the... any pull requests would also be very welcomed. Okay, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. That's I think that's a, yeah. something that's being explored now. That's not my area of expertise, unfortunately. The next thing I do want to do, the next level, like go one level deeper, I want to write some assembly for this. I mean, like that, I think that's going to be rock and roll, right? I mean, there's something fun and cool about writing assembly. Like, he's, you know, it's more a good like pickup line, like, Go to Barney, like, hey, I'm writing write an assembly. And they, they go, Ooh. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think, you know, because um, when I've been stepping through with the debugger, you can see when it's loading stuff into different registers. And, you, and I think, oh, I, you see loads of moves that I don't think if I was writing the assembly, I wouldn't do. So I think that'd be a great challenge to see if you could, you know, write some assembly that would outperform the optimized, your optimized CMD stuff. I think that'd be really rad. Um, and, uh, so if anyone's you know wants to give that a go before I get to it, then that would be rad. So that would be my next step. Great question, yeah. So I'm gonna do one more question on this side, and we're running quickly out of time. What was that question? What was the next level of yes? SM, sorry, SMD, what right? is the next level? Uh, right. what, how can you go one deeper for right. stuff like this? And I'd say try and hand code some assembly. There you yeah. go. Let's have something over here. Ah, yes, great question. Thank Re you very much. It, for, please, bring, for the yes. online. So um, when you've got, trying to use the intrinsics, um, how do you get it set up in your project? And 
the reason I haven't covered it basically is because it's dead easy. It's just a single include. That's right. Um, so in this function here, all you need to do, uh, I've put it in a different file actually. Yep. Yep, include imm, imm intrin. Done. And so that brings me on to another great point. Um, for when you're doing um, um, coding stuff with ARM, this header file doesn't exist with ARM. That's the, um, the Intel stuff. So uh, you can write some, you know, some if statements. So you'll say, like, if, um, I can't remember the exact thing, but if, you know, if, I'll do pseudocode, if Intel, then that. And you say, if ARM, then you include SSC Neon. So then uh, else, you'd say else. Um, you'd hash include um, uh, SSC to Neon, it's called. Um, oh, so, so if, else, if, ARM. Oh, you know, you know what I mean. So it's, you know, there, there's, I'll, I'll, I'll get the code snippet. I'll make sure that's on the GitHub. Um, but it's literally that easy to get going with it. It's, it's that straightforward. And just beyond that, just making sure that your processor, uh, the processor you want to deploy on, does in fact have the feature set that you're trying to compile. Jamie, uh, we have a couple of online questions, but we probably only have time to take one of them. But I just wanted to acknowledge that Alex and a couple of mics have thrown in some questions. The question I love in here is, do you have any recommended resources, books, forums, websites, or anything like that? Yes. So um, there, I, I can't, can't point you to any, any particular books. But as I said at the start, um, there's another fantastic resource, which is uh, the One Lone Coders um, uh, tutorial on intrinsics. And he takes you through a different kind of route. So he'll take you through more um, about using uh, branching and using kind of if statements in SIMD, which is really cool. And you know, it's a really great tutorial because he talks about um, uh, calculating fractals. And I think as like computer programmers, we think fractals and like self-reference is really cool. So that's an awesome tutorial. He's done tutorial about you know, how to calculate these really deep fractals, and he'll do, he'll does it with um with doubles. So that's a uh, you only do four at a time, but it's all the same concepts. Um, and I highly recommend that because that was that's one of the things that got me started on it. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, then I definitely recommend that. It's a uh, I'm sure you can find it one lone coder um, intrinsic. So it'll come straight up on YouTube. Thank you, Jamie. Everyone, let's give Jamie a really big round of applause. Thank great. you very much.